So good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to a beautiful fall morning here, Monday, November 7th. And we are going to call this meeting to order. We'll move into new and counselor business. I believe we'll start with Councillor Bellick, if she's ready. Thank you, Worship. Good morning, everyone. And uh, after hearing the weather on the radio this morning, we are indeed fortunate up here in the Peace Country. Um, in my uh, motion that I've put forward under Councillor's business, uh, this background is actually the discussion I was having with myself and listening to, to the developments we've been doing in town and sort of a rationale in my mind that maybe we should do something to our bylaws to catch up with. Uh, we just done the park thing with all the green areas, but the uh, green that's integrated, the trees that are integrated into our uh, developments that would help with uh, uh, stormwater runoff and help us with some carbon capture and uh, uh, keep us from having this gray earth uh, uh, that ref you know reflects heat <coughs> and uh, denudes the natural way of handling our stormwater. And so I have brought this motion, uh, whereas Dawson Creek is experiencing a rapid expansion of industrial commercial growth that is largely located on the east and now west perimeters of the core. And whereas vegetation loss, stormwater runoff, and carbon capture are affected by packing, gray earth, gravel, and paving cementing of lots. Therefore, be it resolved that the development permitting process be revised to include plans for slowing of stormwater runoff, tree and natural plant rehab, and carbon capture through those measures. And further, that industrial commercial sites developed over the past few years of economic upswing should be encouraged to remediate a portion of their land, and especially at resale time that this new bylaw would be applied. Respectfully submitted. You're seconding, are you? I am. Okay, um, so we'll go around the room for discussion. Uh, first, we'll start Councillor uh, Schumann. Um, I would I'd like to ask staff if they're, like in our current uh, developing pro development process, if there, what, what there is in place to, um, to, uh, to address these issues, the issues that Councillor Bellick brings up. Uh, through your worship, the, uh, Firstly, I should say your development permit must mirror requirements of your official community plan. So uh, the revisions that Councillor Bellick is speaking about uh, involve um, reopening the official community plan. So we would be talking about the same series of public consultations that you just concluded. Uh, that official community plan does not require things like parkland dedication on industrial sites. It does require the storm management part, but not the tree planting. Uh, there's no allowance for carbon credits. I'm, I'd have to look into the carbon credit thing. I, uh, I don't know if uh, carbon credits that we issued would be, would have a commercial value to them or not. I haven't looked into that. What I can tell you is that uh, to make this happen, you can't make it happen just through your development permit process. You have to start with your official community plan. Okay, Councillor McFadden. Well, I, uh, I agree in principle, but I think it. Uh I think it's a little bit more complicated than, than the motion would suggest. So I think it should go back to staff uh, to do a bit of research into it and get back to us with some ideas. And, uh, in principle, it's a good idea, but I'm just not that certain uh, how it would, I mean, how many trees, what kind of trees, where, I mean, just all kinds of questions that I don't have. I don't have the answer. Though I do agree in principle. Thank you, Councilor Goodhue. Um, Jim, you were saying that we would have to open the whole official community plan. We, we couldn't just um, add an item to it? Well, in order to amend an official community plan, which is what you just did, you didn't rewrite it entirely, okay. you amended it. Uh, the Act uh, considers that's the single most uh, important binding document in the community. And you have to hold uh, public hearings, you have to have public consultation. The community has to be involved in writing or changing the official community plan. When they do, those requirements form the baseline under which your zoning and your development permit processes align. So it's to provide certainty to the community and to developers. They can look at the official community plan and know the kind of things you'll look at when they bring a development permit forward. Um, so to make that work, it's a, you start the process with the official community plan and then you roll it through your zoning and your development permit. 
Thank Councilor Bell. Uh, to respond to that discussion, I believe that in the official community plan, under the way we manage our stormwater and uh, 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 the part of our uh, statements and encouragements already in the process about encouraging this sort of behavior it would just be moving it on to a step and and I think uh, that the councillors are right you know this this is a discussion that needs to be uh, to happen and that this could be refined and come back from staff with a suggestion of how we could do this under the existing community plan because it's well within our vision mission statement and alignment goals it's what our staff is doing I don't think it would come as a surprise to anyone it's uh, a discussion around as well as pipes and ways of handling uh, you know we've discussed over the years the packing on those sites that use a lot of water plus then cause runoff to happen quickly it's a discussion that we're having both internally and with the industry about how to do that and uh, my interest is in uh, perhaps it needs to go to strategic planning about how we could handle that but uh, I, I think it's a discussion going on in our public works departments and our development departments and that the groundwork is there in the community plan just like it is for our uh, you know, uh, solar hot water ready uh, houses and stuff. It's a matter of implementing and looking at stages to implement it. Uh, perhaps, uh, I, you know, I tend to uh, look at our documents and, and see them a little more loosely and, and, and don't get the finer points of it, but I think it is a dis uh, discussion that staff and uh, council should have about what we could do under the existing plan. I think we have a very good plan and, and if we look for opportunities within that, to move in this direction, that would be sufficient, uh, you know, for me. I, we have so much development. When you drive out there and look, you can see the difference it's making to our landscape. And possibly a year ago, we wouldn't have even realized that. It's how the oil and gas industry have come along too. You know, when they first were in this room talking to us, they didn't know how much water they were going to use. That's been sort of a development surprise, and I think the same with us. When I look around my community, it is now varying from what I'd like to see out there. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Councillor Kenny. Uh, I, I think it's an excellent uh, suggestion, Marilyn. And uh, I know out in uh, Pooskoopi, that in, on the industrial sites, that they have been planting trees. Uh, along their in industrial sites and um, I, I don't think that Pooskoopi has any policies or bylaws insisting that they do that but um, we, I think we, we should investigate it anyway and even you know speak speak to um, you know to the owners of the property and see if they are uh, you know they go yeah enter a discussion with them on, on planting uh, small trees uh, along their property edge I think most and of them I, would be well. And I know we do a lot of that through the development permitting process right now. I know Kevin works for that. Jim? Uh, through your worship, um, if this is referred to Committee of the Whole, then Kevin can bring you a report or bring you discussion about uh, how this uh, resolution does or doesn't fit in with the official community plan as it stands on. <coughs> uh, probably not by the 21st, but by the, the uh, would be the January, January Committee yeah. of the Whole. You know, I'd certainly be uh, be happy to also at that time have suggestions brought around about what sort of uh, policy could be put in that meant the intention of this, but fit in with our community plan better. Uh, so that that is exactly where I wanted to take it. So I would be happy to either withdraw the motion. And it's just a motion to refer, and then it would be fine. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're going to motion to refer, and Councillor Kenny seconding. Okay. No discussion? Okay, so all those in favor? Opposed? And it's carried. Okay, thank you. Uh, still on new councillor business? Councillor Bellica, did you have anything else you wish oh. to add? Oh, gee. I went to the Peace Out film, and there was a great cross section, a, a much larger audience in Enchaga Hall than I expected, one half to two thirds full, and, and a great cross section. I talked to several people from the oil and gas industry and people from PV and Pest and, and all of the organizations. The film was. Uh, Enlightening to me, who coming like us coming from this area and having all the insiders' information, you know, it felt like it had missed a whole lot of stuff. It could have been a 10 hour movie to cover all angles of the things. But it was interesting to reflect on the reception it had down in Vancouver at the film festival to be the top uh, documentary and carried over and stuff. How little 
the south of BC understands where this energy is coming from and, and how the needs are being met. So I like that it stayed a kind of open-ended discussion about what the factors involved were and, and stayed very uh, uh, civil and conscious about the use of energy. But that's, that was the biggest part, was that uh, obviously it was a big hit in the south and a big surprise to everyone there. So I'm glad that we're just getting out that uh, people understand where their energy is coming from at least. So. Yeah, been busy, and that's the last thing I can think of I went to. Okay, thanks, Councillor Kenny. Mm -hmm. Anything to add? Yeah, I've, I've been pretty busy, too, between work and council. Uh, um, I forgot to mention in my last uh, council report, uh, attending as acting mayor to the Raising of the Roof mm -hmm. uh, fundraiser there uh, uh, that the uh, Dawson Creek Exhibition Association did, and it was a fantastic event. There was 250 people there participating, and... Um, I didn't stay right to the end. I don't know what the end results were, but I'm sure they're good. There was a lot of names on the silent auction, and there were some great items that were donated for the silent auction. And I also attended the Aboriginal Gathering Space opening in Northern Lights College. I'd like to congratulate uh, Councillor uh, Teresa Gladue. Uh, she did a marvelous job in organizing the event and uh, initiating the Aboriginal gathering space, and it was very well attended, and I was I was very pleased to be there. And uh, yeah, that's about. It. Thank you, Councillor Powell. Yeah, I wasn't at the last meeting. I was in Victoria and attending the tourism conference, and uh, listened to both the premier and the minister Pat Bell tell us that don't worry, it's going to happen, but we still don't have any money, <laughs> any guarantee of such, but. Uh, they're both very positive, and I have no doubt that it will be forthcoming. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Even though uh, I will be here for one more meeting, I will. Uh, this is the last one before the election, so I'd like to congratulate the three that are running: Sue, Terry, and Cheryl, and uh, particularly Mike. Congratulations on being acclaimed. I think it speaks uh, to where this council has come <coughs> to see you acclaimed after what we went through in the election of 2008, the referendum of 2009, how this council and staff pulled together to get us through a very difficult time, the most difficult time I saw in the 12 years I've been on this council. And I think uh, we can all be proud of that but I think it really speaks to what the community thinks. Nobody from those other groups that fought us so hard stood up and wanted to take on Mike. I think they realized what we've done over the last two years to bring this council back and to bring the city to where it has is well appreciated. And I'm sure that the electors will look favorably upon all of us as time goes by. I will miss it. But I won't miss this part. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for those words, bud. Appreciate it. Aww. Councillor Schumann. Uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, it's been busy. I attended a day of the Aboriginal Health Conference and found that very enlightening, actually. Um, very positive and, and enlightening. And uh, also attended the uh, Aboriginal Gathering Space opening and would also like to congratulate <coughs> Teresa on on a really great space at the college that I'm sure will be very well used. Lots of things going on in the community, so many things you can't get to them all. I had to miss the Peace Out movie because there was a, the installation of the Kiwanians and it's just <laughs> busy time, so thanks. Thank you, Councilor Goodoo. <coughs> Good morning. I wasn't here at the last meeting either because I was attending a funeral of a family member in Alberta um, so, I wanted to say that we drummed for the Premier when he came into town, which was an honour. And we also opened the S Success by Six conference. Heidi invited us there to open and drum. And I also attended the Northeast Aboriginal Health Conference, which I thought was just absolutely amazing. I found out a lot of information and uh, met a lot of, a lot, a lot of people. And, um... I attended the Aboriginal Gathering opening. <laughs> you organized the Aboriginal Gathering opening. <laughs> and you sang. And, you sang. and we sang. <laughs> it was actually really good. Um, 
I'm not running for council, as you guys know. I knew that in May. I just didn't uh, bother announcing it at the time. We're, I'm going to be working two additional weekends at the college teaching Cree Tuesdays and Thursdays and then plus um, Leo was kind enough to give me my own radio show so that'll be keep me busy <laughs> and like Bud said um, I won't miss this part of it <laughs> thank you Councilman Fadden thank you your worship uh, most of my activities I think have been could probably be classified as campaigning. <laughs> <laughs> that being the case, I don't think I'll report upon it now because I don't want to use this forum to advance my self-interest. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so on that, then, we'll uh, move to the minutes. We have 3-1, 3-2, and 3-3, which are public hearing, regular meeting, and special meeting minutes. So Councillor Kenny and Councillor Guadu. All those in favor? Those carried and any business arising from any of those minutes. So seeing none, we'll move on to correspondence. We have 5-1, which is a letter from Philip J. Curry from the Dinosaur Museum. And this is uh, just outside Grand Prairie, actually. Yeah. Councillor Bellick. Thank you, Your Worship. I'll move it for information. OK, seconded by Councillor Kenny. And then discussion, Councillor Bellick. I, I did want to say that just serendipitously, I went to Tumbler Ridge uh, uh, yesterday and saw the um, uh, Dinosaur Museum there, which is a fabulous interpretive display, and met with Richard, who is uh, the uh, paleontologist, and he mentioned that Sue Kenny is on their board and how much they appreciate having her there. Uh, but it's a wonderful thing. But some of the people, I went with the Nature Club, and the Shanes uh, belong to this Peace River um, museums organization and, and talked quite a bit about this wonderful proposal in this dinosaur trackway but uh, um, I uh, the only thing I couldn't understand from this letter letter is whether they just wanted us to do a um, a, a recommendation without any monetary <laughs> commitment or if it was strictly to do the certificate with a donation. Did, did you have that clear from the letter? I looked at it again and it didn't. The way I understand on the background of this, and Jim correct me if I'm wrong please, is that uh, uh, in principle we kind of said we support this concept. Yeah. They're asking for us just to sign this saying that we support the concept because they have not come to the city of Dawson Creek or this side to yeah. ask for any monetary contributions but what they're looking for is basically support out in the region so they can go to their uh, provincial government in Alberta and say we have the support of uh, the cities in the region we're looking for funding because as you can see they're going to be hitting up the uh, mm -hmm. city of Grand wow. Prairie for funds and it looks yep. like it's a matching thing city and then province and then feds is what they're looking for yeah. but one thing we want to uh, take into consideration I mean it's great for the area don't get me wrong yeah. uh, but we also have uh, a lot of support from this council and from the region for what's happening in Tumbler Ridge yes. and what they're trying to promote as well. Uh, I just want council to be cognizant of that. I'm not going to say it's an either or. I mean, it's good for the entire region, especially around tourism, if we can get more people up in the area. Uh, but uh, the way I understand this is they weren't asking for anything specific. So is that accurate, Jim? Uh, through your worship, my understanding is they're going to use your letter of support in the same way that uh, uh, Tumbler Ridge's project used your letter of support to try to leverage funding from government. Yeah. So, but so uh, I yeah, just need to make some uh, the letter of support. I mean, this motion is only for information. I firmly believe we should give them a letter of support, and uh, I also firmly believe we shouldn't con contribute monetarily. But it certainly helps Tumbler Ridge. If that if that museum was there. Tumbler Ridge would be the next stop for everybody that visits that one and vice versa. So mm -hmm. we've talked about this over the last 10 years and always, even the Tumbler Ridge people have always spoke up and said yes, yes. it would be a plus uh, simply because it brings people to the area with that specific interest and the spin-off will, will certainly come. <coughs> but uh, our monetary thing should certainly be towards Tumbler Ridge. Yes. Okay. And, uh, just in case people haven't looked at a map lately, to get to either or, they're going through Dawson Creek. So, yeah. for a well, tourism aspect, it's good. <laughs> well, <laughs> if they're going to get to the other, <laughs> Councillor Kenny. Yes, uh, yeah, and supporting, and supporting that, but uh, Alberta recognizes paleontology and, and research, and 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 supports 
supports it uh, much more than, than British Columbia. A lot of the, um, the, the um, progress that, uh, that we've made in British Columbia in preserving trackways and preserving um, our sites is, is due to the work that's being done by, uh, by the work in Tumbler Ridge. And they call it the Peace, uh, the Peace Region Paleontology Research Centre because they cover the whole Peace Region, not just Tumbler Ridge. I just wanted to point that out. You know, that, you know, you know some of their largest finds are, are like <laughs> north of Fort St. John. So uh, I, I think we should support it too because it, it sets precedence and maybe, you know, um, if Alberta is successful with the Grand Prairie one, then maybe, you know, they'll, they'll look across the border and uh, see the significance. Yeah, well, and in all fairness, I guess, in Alberta, they're decades ahead of British Columbia due to the fact that they've had uh, so much of their uh, discoveries that they've had around uh, the paleontological uh, sites that they've had. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I agree, because if we can bring this closer to home, in the sense in, in Grand Prairie or Wembley out there, then it puts a bit more pressure, I think, on yeah. British Columbia to recognize yeah. the importance of this. I mean, yeah. obviously, from an Alberta perspective, they recognize the tourism component that comes along with this as well, and that's why they're willing to help fund it. So, sorry, I've got a counselor. Sorry. Well, we, yes, we have a motion on the floor right now for information. <coughs> we could defeat that motion, and they're not asking for a letter of support specifically. They're asking us to sign that. That's right certificate and send it back because that's what they want to be able to hand off sure. so council could do did uh councillor powell make the motion no no so it's no we already have no. a motion on the floor is what i was just saying so we have to defeat so let's just we have to defeat that motion okay if you so choose right now it's for information so it's up to council so we can call the question on the uh information and then make another motion after so for yeah so for all those in favor for information okay nope. opposed Oh. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> Wrong hand. Yeah. So it is defeated, so now it's open for a new motion on the floor. Councillor Powell. I'll second his. I'll make a motion that we sign the certificate and return it. Okay, Councillor Gwadu. Any further question on that one then? <laughs> Beat that one up. All those in favor? <laughs> Opposed? And it's carried. And also, that was a great PowerPoint uh, that they put in here with lots of information. Beautiful, right? Eh? So we'll move on then to 5-2, which is a letter from the Dawson Creek Old Timers. Uh, Councillor Schumann. Um, I would move that we uh, grant the permission to host the hospitality suite in the Memorial Arena um, alumni room and mezzanine for the players and guests on Saturday, November 19th. Okay. Second by Councillor Gladu. Any questions? This is an annual request usually for us. Okay, so all those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 5-3 is a letter from Minister Lextrom that went to Joe Stanhope. That Actually, I missed uh, mm -hmm. a specific request in here. Sorry, I'll go. Bud, you want to go first then? Okay. Uh, seconded by Councillor Kenny. Um, Jim, just to remind me on this, reading through it quickly, there's no necessary specific ask, but it looks like they're asking for participation from uh, staff or someone at our end just to be involved. My understanding is that they are setting up a task group and they're looking for a staff contact from any municipality that wishes par to participate. Do you need a separate motion then to task it to you, to either yourself or a staff member, as for information okay and we'll just follow up after? Um, there should probably be a specific resolution to authorize a staff person to participate. Okay. So right now it's for information, but uh, Brenda, can we just go for information with adding uh, this to Jim, or would you like? Both the mover and the second are okay with changing the motion. I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> so we'll, so the letter itself is for information, but Tass and Jim to go on with that. Councillor Bellick? Well, I, um, sorry, just <coughs> clarification. In reading the letter, I thought they were asking for staff from the ministry to be appointed. So I find it a bit confusing, the letter. The way I understand it, Minister Lextrom has already gone to staff, staff at the ministry and said, you, uh, we are going to do this, but they want to reach out and try to have some uh, municipal uh, support on the task force. I guess I would ask for a suggestion from you and Jim who would be appropriate and from our staff. So. Yeah, and that's, that's why right now the motion, I guess, would be to, with that information and tasking it to Jim, and then Jim can always report back to us, I think, whether it would be himself or whether he would... Uh, ask somebody else on staff. Okay, 
Any other questions? All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. And a little early for delegations. <clears throat> we just have a couple of proclamations there, but we'll move on to uh, reports then. Uh, we have 7 1 is report 11 188 from the Director of Corporate Administration. This is for our animal control agreement for the SPCA. Councillor Bellick. I move the recommendation that we uh, sign the contract again. Okay, seconded by Councillor Gladu. And questions, Councillor Schumann. Yeah, through <coughs> you to staff. Um, so we're giving um, $100,000 a year, give or take, um, to this contract. Do we have any say in, um, or are we interested in any of the qualifications needed by, or the qualifications of the people working at the um, the the SPCA, or do we do we have any input into that, or is it just the, the decisions are made somewhere else with regards to to qualifications for the people that run? Yeah, no, we have our internal bylaw on this too for the so policies. Through jump. your worship, the contract requires certain performance indicators, uh, enforcing our bylaw, housing, uh, stray animals. There's a list of things that the contract covers, and it's up to the contractor how they cover those. So we can't um, request that you know the people running in the SPCA have certain qualifications. Yeah, Through your, your worship, we can't under this contract, and I'm unsure why you would wish to. Well, just uh, making sure that there's qualified people running the SPCA, I guess. Well, but again, your worship, yeah. our protection is if the contract, if they don't deliver yeah. uh, mm -hmm. or don't perform the deliverables in the contract. Yeah, just like any other contract that we put out to the city, and then if I, cou council I, feels I, you're not following through, then I don't give them the contract. Yes. I just had that question. Okay. Any other questions or comments then on that? All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7 2 is report 11 026 from the Director of Community Services. And this is the planning for greenhouse gas reductions, our update for the community energy plan. Oh my goodness. Um, Councillor Powell. I'll move the recommendation. Thank you. And Councillor Kenny is seconding, and the recommendation <coughs> being we're going to forward this off to uh, strategic planning. And we'll be discussed further there. And I think we should uh, thank staff, though, as well, because as you can tell by this report, there was a lot of uh, work and effort put into not only the background information that we've done here at the city, but uh, really compiling what's already been discussed through our strat planning and putting into one document. So again, uh, Jim and staff. Report yes, and it's going to be a very interesting strategic plan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Bell. <laughs> Thank you. There, there. I had one concern in reading it that we have for a long time had the was it a bylaw or the uh, that um, housing would be um, so um, alternate energy <coughs> ready or, or solar hot water mm -hmm. uh, heat ready and we haven't been enforcing that by law I know we oh the way I was reading the summary was that uh, uh, part of our strategies would be to um, to enforce that by law so it's interesting but I think when uh, I'm when the director is, is maybe giving us committee of the whole next week, I'll address that. But yeah. do you know you don't know anything about that? Okay. Yeah, and actually, it will be a great opportunity next week. Uh, uh -huh. You know, when when Kevin's up, yeah. if you want to ask that question, because uh, I know there was some discussion around that, and I believe that just you know, council's just finalizing most of that. So, <coughs> Councillor Schumann, and then Gladue. Yeah. So I found this very interesting. Um, of course, we're we're sort of been learning a lot about this as we've been on council the last three years but uh, looking at the timeline and noting that it started you know back in 2003 that this isn't something that just came about with this council or the previous council like it's it's been ongoing this whole process towards sustainability for for many years now and uh, it's, um, it's awesome to be forwarding this on to our strategic planning yep. And of course, encourage everybody to look at this as well, because as you say, this is almost 10 years we've been doing this. Mm -hmm. So, Councillor Goodin. <coughs> I just have a question, um, and the question is, with all the industrial development going on within the city boundaries, is um, is the f is the carbon footprint of Dawson Creek increasing? Jim, through your worship, yes, it is. Yep. Yeah. The um, the policies that you have are relative to your own operations. 
and your own operations, you've identified places where you can uh, reduce your carbon emissions. Uh, a big project on the future horizon is a biomass burner for the multiplex because it's a huge consumer of the product that the mayor sells under his other hat. Uh, so you've got strategies. There's recommendations in here about what projects you might wish to prioritize in that regard. In terms of the community, your policies don't apply to the community. You are making uh, educational efforts with the community and you're, you're proceeding on things like uh, solar readiness, uh, construction bylaw, those sorts of things. Uh, but any community that is growing at the rate we are is going to have growing carbon emissions. Yeah. And the Climate Action Charter refers to the corporate side as well. So. Okay. So this will be referred to strat planning then for the new council. So any other discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Opposed? And it's carried. I noticed the three that aren't running again had no problem forwarding it off. So. <laughs> On that, let's move to uh, delegations. We'll go back in the here. And we're first one we have is for restorative justice proclamations. We have Michelle, is it Labacan? Labacan, sorry, my apologies, and uh, Patricia Burley. So I've got the proclamation here, and I'll just read this out. And so whereas in the face of crime or conflict, restorative justice offers a philosophy and approach that views these matters principally as harm done to people and relationships, and whereas restorative justice approaches strive, approaches strive to provide support and opportunities to the voluntary participation and communication between those affected by crime and conflict, the victims, offenders, and community, to encourage accountability, reparation, and a movement towards understanding, feelings of satisfaction, healing, and a sense of closure. And whereas this year's theme of Restorative Justice Week is revisioning justice, it is an opportunity to learn about restorative justice, educate and celebrate along with other communities across the country during this week. So therefore, I do hereby proclaim November 13th to November 20th, 2011, as Restorative Justice Week in Dawson Creek. I'll just sign that and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Mayor, councillors. Um, I'm just, I'm the coordinator of the North Peace Justice Society, and so we manage the restorative justice program in the whole North Peace and some of the South Peace every once in a while. Um, the philosophy of restorative justice is based on community healing. Um, in other words, the community decides what uh, is best for itself in terms of certain criminal matters. Um, while the formal justice system is adversarial, adverse serial. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> and punishment based, the focus of restorative justice is on offender accountability, problem solving and creating an equal voice for offenders and victims. The best results occur when the victim, offender, and community jointly resolve the effects of the, be the be offender's behavior. Currently, the North Peace Justice Society is using the Community Justice Forum model. It is a safe, <coughs> controlled environment in which the offender, victim, and their families and, or supporters are brought together under the guidance of a trained facilitator. This is usually done in a circle formation so that everyone can see each other. They jointly discuss the offense and how they've been affected, and together they develop a plan to correct what has occurred. It's righting the wrong. It can involve a simple apology and restitution for the victim. Other agreements may include community service work, counseling, or addictions treatment for the offender. We also train and support the conservation officers. They use the program, and I don't know how to explain this the best. Go it, ahead, it's the, the restorative justice system has been used in the Conservation Officer Service here in BC for uh, about five years. Um, we have done files with large industrial spills, environmental, um, as, as well as wildlife. And it's a great opportunity and it's been a learning experience for me for the last two years to take interest in this because we have animals in the environment that don't they can't speak for itself. So we have to have victims that are affected by these animals being killed out of season or the environment or the environment being um, um, polluted. So it's a great system that is new to me as well, but I've experienced it last year. I had a file and, and it went well. It was a, a success. 
So, and that's the whole point of the revisioning. <coughs> we're using the restorative justice program can be used in many different forms. Um, we're looking right now in Fort St. John to add an anti-bullying uh, portion to the program um, so that we can involve the schools in becoming part of the restorative justice program. Um, we are starting to do healing circles in the Aboriginal communities. This program is flexible. It offers some really good opportunities. For a first-time offender, you know, we, we call it when good kids do silly things. It really offers them a chance to um, repair the wrong, fix the right, learn from their mistakes. And in the end, it's a really good learning experience for them. We have a really good success rate in the community. My goal is to host some training coming up again in January, February. We're waiting to find out because the trainer comes from Chilliwack. And we would like to invite as many Dawson Creek participants so that you guys can get the program up and running in Dawson Creek. So is there Excellent, any, thank any, you. Any questions? <coughs> well, it's in a great, great program too, like your comment, uh, good kids doing silly things, I guess. Uh, conversely, you can turn around the whole point of the program is so the silly kids can now do good things. Mm -hmm. so it's actually, I've heard it's been had quite a success. So, Councillor Gladue. Hi. Hello. It's uh, nice to see this going. We used to use this a lot in our reserve when we were little. They used to use that um, quite a bit. But are you in partnership with the school district 59? Because I know Karen Jones and Kathy Sawchuck provide this training. Mm -hmm. No, we are not. We, we are based on the other side of the river, <laughs> um, but that doesn't mean that those partnerships can't be formed. I will leave all this information at the reception desk and there's my card and everything, brochures in there. Please feel free to share it. We will support, um, we will support anybody <coughs> in the community that would like to start up the program Cause and we help them. Because when, we uh, when I was at the North, um, Northeast Health Conference, Karen Jones had pointed out that they have been using it in the uh, South Peace and Central School for the last couple of years. <coughs> and they said it was it was uh, working wonders. Right. <coughs> Any other questions from Council? No? Seeing none, thank you very much. I do have, if you want to come forward, actually, I have the proclamation here that I can hand to you in case the media would like to come forward. <laughs> For our next delegation, I believe we're just going to uh, invite them in. Hello. Hi. Good morning. So we are at 6-2. We're at the proclamation for uh, Adoption Awareness Month. And so I'll just read out the proclamation and then invite you to come forward. So whereas adoptive families in British Columbia provide the love and support of a permanent family, and whereas the government of British Columbia wishes to recognize the care, compassion, and unselfish commitment of British Columbia adoptive families, and whereas there continues to be a need for adoptive families to nurture the growth and development of children, especially those with special needs because of age, physical, mental, or emotional disabilities, and sibling groups. Now therefore, I do hereby proclaim the month of November as Adoption Awareness Month in Dawson Creek. I invite you to come forward. Thanks again for coming in. I'm the 
Adoption Support Coordinator with Adoptive Families Association of BC. I supply adoptive service support services to all our families in the area. Um, Karen Maxwell is the Ministry Adoption Worker. Um, in the province at the moment there are 4,700 children that are continuing care in the province of BC. There are 1,200 children waiting to be adopted and in the last year they adopted 263. So we're pecking away at it but we never seem to get below the 1,200 waiting for homes. We always need new families pretty desperately actually. And there's opportunity obviously through the through the local office maybe come forward even if there's questions if they're not sure if they want to be on the phone there. I know we have the uh, support and resources locally where people can come in and get those questions answered and find out if it's right for them. And we gotcha. Always available if they just want to inquire and gather more information and, and make a decision if they would like to proceed. And I know everybody I know who's uh, been involved in this has always been a very positive life changing experience for people who are willing to step up and help out. So thank you very much for the I have a question. How easy is it to find, like if you're adopted out, how easy is it to find your biological parents? Do you, or do they get assistance from the ministry that's uh, adopted out the children? Yes, there's a program called the Post-Adoption Openness Registry and uh, also the Adoption Reunion Registry. Um, so they're both Okay. And if the child was, or if, if the adoption occurred in D.C., they can help you with that. Track down those, that kind that of information. If you want to go somewhere else in Canada, they can point you to the right agency. Every province, I believe every province has an agency that helps out with that. Oh, okay, thanks. I have there a friend that's been, looking like, for her family, so. I've just, yeah, I have her ask from the ministry. Oh, okay. All right, thank you. There is quite an emphasis nowadays with adoptions that there is openness agreements. So quite often we have adopted three, we have openness agreements and they have contact with the family and and stuff. So it isn't the, the problem nowadays that it was, yeah. you know, a long time ago when everything was secretive and, and stuff. So they found that, I mean, the kids like to know where they come from and... Um, you know, keep that connection. They just started fortunate enough to have two families instead of one. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, thanks again for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so for uh, one more proclamation that we have today, we have uh, Michelle, or sorry, uh, Catherine Charbonneau in attendance. Uh, looks like brought some friends as well. Good morning. I'll just read out this proclamation. So whereas on March 19th, 1993, the Government of Canada proclaimed November 20th as National Child Day to commemorate two historic events for children, the adoption of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of the Child, 1959, and the UN adoption of the Convention of the Rights of the Child in 1989. And whereas it is a day to remember that children need love and respect to grow to their full potential, and whereas it is a day to marvel at their uniqueness in all they have to offer. And whereas it is a day to celebrate the family and think about how adults affect the development of children close to them. And whereas this National Child Day celebrates, I have the right to be active, promoting the importance of physical activity for children's health and well-being. And whereas many individuals, organizations, and municipalities throughout British Columbia have since 1993 organized events in celebration of National Child Day. I do hereby proclaim November 20th as National Child Day in Dawson Creek. And please come forward. Good morning. Meeting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. <laughs> 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 
ます。<笑><笑><笑>
Yeah, thank you for that. Yes, and it is nice to see a development company. I mean, come forward and it's a it's a space right now that's not being used for those who haven't had the luxury of having a full tour of the <laughs> multiplex. We have quite a bit of unused space uh, that's available for opportunities like this. So it's great to see some development happening there, Councillor Bellick. Can that cement be poured now in this in uh, over the winter, and so that's a project that can be accomplished now? Yes, it's it's inside. It's uh, yeah. so it wouldn't be an issue there and. I'm not sure on timeline, but Jim, is there anything? That we uh, through your worship, the hope is that it can, the work can be completed actually this week, so we're here. Oh, sweet. That fast enough for you, Marilyn? <laughs> it's, uh, it's before the 19th. Yes. <laughs> uh, the <laughs> actually what governs the timing is the fact that the cement plant shut down and they no longer have work, so uh, the work has to either it's not. Uh, the site itself. The site itself is heated, but unless the work is uh, completed before the concrete plant shut down, it won't get done. Until That's true. Yeah. Is that nice. a seasonal shutdown? Or? Oops. The, the local concrete plants, uh, as long as I can remember, usually shut down as soon as it starts getting uh, quite cold uh, ex oh. throughout the nights and days because they have a hard time operating the plant. And then at the same time, there's not as much happening pouring concrete mm -hmm. over the winter. I know a lot of the developers I've spoken with uh, recently have in advance of what's uh, going to be possibly a cold winter again they're saying uh, a lot of them have gotten a lot of the cement work done floors and foundations in advance of that so they can continue developing and doing the wood construction through the winter months that don't require the cement hmm. so, Councillor Gladue and then Kenny I just wanted to thank um, Barry and whoever was involved for bringing forward this initiative okay thank you Councillor Kenny yeah, um, where the concrete's being laid. <laughs> is it, it is it also where, like, the, the conference center rooms that, it's not down there? Uh, well, it's the opposite side of that. It's the it's area the in the original side. plans that was earmarked for uh, ex development or expansion, possibly into a, uh, an exercise area or something. To oh, that effect. okay, okay. It's across okay. from so, the Rage's dressing room. Right. Like that, I, I thought that, that but I was just kind of hoping too that it was. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost <laughs> almost right underneath the uh, almost right underneath oh, the entrance when you walk in. Mm -hmm. so. Not the convention side. Yeah. No, not the convention side. That's not being touched. Yet. Yeah. Any, any other uh, questions then? All those in favor? Opposed? And it's carried. 7-4 is report 11-189. This is from the Director of Infrastructure and Sustainable Development. This is for a development variance permit at 840 Watson Crescent for Hart Modular Homes. Councillor McFadden. I'll move the recommendation, Your Worship. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Kenny. Any uh, questions or comments for this? Other than it's great to see another uh, vacant lot and infill <laughs> in town. I mean, so. Mm -hmm. no. I don't see any issues at all except for uh, positives. Yeah. No, nothing else? Okay, so all those in favor? Opposed? And it's carried. And good morning. Good morning, Mr. Newman, by the way. <laughs> Move on to bylaws. 8 1 is a fees and charges amendment bylaw 4125 for adoption. Councillor Schumann, seconded by Councillor Kenny. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, next, 8 2. And we're going to see how fast hands go up here. Dawson Creek Park dedication bylaw 4126 for adoption. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Bellick, <laughs> Councillor Cadu. Councillor Schumann, we did it. Yeah, Councilor seconded Kenny. by everybody, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, any comments? All those in favor? No. Opposed? And it is I carried. met uh, Kathy, actually, who, our ex staff who worked on it so hard uh, downtown once and talked to her over it. And she said, What a fascinating project at the end of her career to, mm -hmm. to review all hard, 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 but how fascinating it was to mm -hmm. find the history out. So it's been good for all of us. Three your worship? Yes, thank you. Jim. This actually should be part of the uh, pre election or pre-election orientation for people wishing to be yeah, exactly. Here you have two bylaws, and one of them you're going to charge the old timers more for their uh, for their <laughs> leash space at the arena, and the other you're going to dedicate parks. So sometimes <laughs> hands are anxious to go up, and sometimes they're not. <laughs> Thanks. So on that, we'll move to, uh, to mayor's business. Um, Tyra's just gone to get me some of the information regarding the candlelight conservation dinner. Uh, because that was uh, quite a success and I wouldn't mind uh, if we can get the information I'll read out some of the uh, the winners and the support that we had but uh, while I'm waiting for that just a reminder to um, 
few people around this room and everybody in the community that is running for a position on council. Uh, November 25th, uh, during the day starting at 9 a.m. till around, well, later into the afternoon. We'll see how long it goes. We're having our official orientation meeting for those six people that are successful to be on council. Uh, I'd like to extend that information, or sorry, that uh, uh, invite to the media for the morning part of the session. Uh, so, uh, Kristen and Matthew that are here still, and I'll make sure I get a hold of the rest of the media if you so choose. That's uh, November 25th here at uh, 9 a.m. We're going to be having our orientation. It's going to be an, an information meeting, get the uh, new council up to speed on past, present, and future. And uh, it'd be a great opportunity if you so choose, and there'll be a lunch provided as well. And thanks for hanging out to me. I it's over here. Mm -hmm. So we'll go back on 9 1 under the mayor's business. I uh, just have a few stats here I wanted to read out, and this is around the Candlelight Conservation Dinner, and I want to thank uh, council staff and media I didn't confirm, but uh, for everybody in the community's involvement, and, you know, we did the draw around here for people to go to specific restaurants. We had 13 restaurants participating, and we had 590 people fill out uh, for the draw. That's how many people went out that night that actually took the time to enter the draw. I know there's probably even more than that that didn't take the time. One highlight, Boston Pizza had 109 just at that one restaurant. And I believe, Councillor Bellick, you were the one uh, oh, who yeah, went to Boston was. Pizza. As I saw some great pictures, you uh, got quite engaged with the staff there. and They were into it. <laughs> yeah, that, that, was, that was great to see. Um, so quickly, some of the, uh, the four people who won. We have Jamie Moore of Chetwin, Margaret Berg of Ground Birch, Al Nelson of Dawson Creek, and Sean Bradley of Dawson Creek, uh, who all won. Uh, some nights in hotels and some uh, spending money at restaurants, which was great. So on that, uh, 13 restaurants participated. So I think it's important just to say how many people in the community got out and involved uh, with that evening. So big thanks to all the sponsors. I know BC Hydro uh, spent a lot of time trying to promote this, but more importantly, Melanie Turcott, who uh, everybody knows here at the community in the city hall, who put a lot of time and effort into making sure that. Uh, people were recognized the importance of this evening and got involved and so big thanks to everybody hmm. was BC, uh, sorry yes no problem was hydro uh, monitoring our energy use in the city that night or how were they uh, you know i i can't answer that control. question I, I know they i don't think they were the way i understood it it was more of a uh, a promotional just get out uh, get, get the businesses them. involved mm -hmm. get people get understanding it's yeah. just another opportunity just for awareness that uh, don't have to have every light on to still have a nice evening. That's you know, part of their uh, uh, conservation strategy. So. Yeah. so on that, we'll move to uh, the diary. Jim. I'll kick that over to Greg, Your Worship. I thought you would. <laughs> Thank you, Your Worship. Um, thanks to the good fall weather, we've completed a lot of the exterior and the servicing work. And it looks like the weather's going to continue, so we should get that roof complete as well. Um, we're still working on the interior and we'll be starting the major work of encapsulating the lead and removing the remaining asbestos and that's going to take us the better part of two months to complete. Uh, for people who are anxious to get inside and are wondering what it looks like, I've added a couple of pictures to the web page so if you just go on to the Calvin Cook Center uh, uh, web page on the city's web page uh, under the construction pictures icon, there's a couple that show the pop-up roof and the opening from the basement right up to, to the roof on the inside. It's, it's, uh, it's very nice to see that something is actually happening. Uh, at the reclaimed water plant, things are going very well. Foundation walls are poured and, of course, our company couldn't have asked for better weather and I think they were quite surprised to get it. Um, the really good news is we've got the test back from the Sager cells and they're performing very well. They're meeting or exceeding all of our design parameters thus far. Mm. And uh, they will continue to mature as, as uh, time goes on and will be fully ready by the time we've uh, finished the plant. So that's all I have for this week. That's great news. And I know a few people asked me about uh, the Calvin Crook Center because when we were building the multiplex we offered uh, tours so people could see it and I, my comments at this time because it is quite an active um, zone where there's having to do decommissioning before they can uh, do some structure it's uh, it's an unsafe 
uh, place right now for tours, but I said once, you know, in the new year, once things are starting to come into place, if there's an opportunity, we will definitely do look at doing that. So, well, having said that, Your Worship, I'm kind of hoping I can get council there at the next council meeting. Uh, you'll have to wear uh, Tyvek suits and booties and hard hats, of course. Uh, <laughs> But uh, the good news is you won't have to wear a respirator, so you could actually uh, <laughs> talk to each other while you're there. Okay. Council McFadden, sorry, was it your hand up? Yeah, just regarding the Crux Center, my understanding is we're still uh, under budget, but probably a little behind in the time uh, completion date. Is that still the case? Uh, through your worship, yeah, we're, we're quite a bit behind, and we'll get further behind with this work that we're undertaking. Um, the budget's in good shape. But uh, because of all this extra cost having to do with the lead and the asbestos and the, the, the slowdowns because of that, uh, we are going to have to have a session where we go back over and look at all the remaining items and say, well, what can we live without for the time being? Or what can we change to save some money? Just to make darn sure that we still have a bit of contingency before the project's finished. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, did I see any other hands up? No. Okay, so we'll move on to uh, the consent calendar, 11-1. Councillor Gladue, seconded by Councillor Bellick. All those in favor? Opposed and carried. And strategic priorities chart, Jim. Uh, through your worship, you will note that there are more checkoffs. There are a couple of items still uh, to be actioned before the end of the year, including the election, but uh, it's still intended to be held on November 19th. And uh, <laughs> we would certainly uh, urge folks to come out. We would like to beat the total that came out for the candlelight dinner. <laughs> that, uh, that would be pretty good. Uh, that would be about, what, 5%? So, yeah, we're hoping for a bit more than that. Uh, the last two elections, we've averaged approximately 40% for uh, electorate turnout. Just over 3,000 people. So we're hoping to uh, definitely do a lot better than that this election. We're encouraging everybody to get out. Uh, with 15 people running, uh, that's uh, quite a cross-section of the community and hopefully it engages a lot of people to be involved. So any que question and answer period? Nobody signed up for that, I'm assuming, Brenda. So we'll move on then to media question period. Do we have anything at this time? Matthew? Well, uh, ten, we'll question that uh, orientation on the yes. time is that started? 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Yes. Yeah, okay. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. to noon, then lunch, and then there's a closed session uh, from 12.30 to about 2.30 to go over uh, updating new councillors on all the business of the corporation that has not yet been released to the public. Perfect. But for the media, we definitely invite you from mm -hmm. 9 to noon and stay for lunch as well. Mm -hmm. That was your only question was around the lunch, wasn't it, Matthew? Or? Yes, what will they be? <laughs> Excellent. So if no other media questions at that time, then a motion to recess to closed. Councillor Bellick, seconded by Councillor Schumann. All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. And we will take a five minute uh, intermission. <laughs>